Hello guys, today I'm going to be teaching you about double exposure. It's this reoccurring thing that I've been seeing on Tumblr and Pinterest a lot lately where you double expose portraits and have like mostly nature or cityscapes behind the person. I think they're really neat and I haven't really seen that many tutorials lately on them so I thought that I would show you guys how to do it. Um, we're going to be using with this one today, really simple, I just for the tutorial's sake you guys can get more creative than I am later on. <laughs> uh, so to start off you have two images. I'm going to be using a cathedral picture and a portrait picture. So the first thing you want to do is take one of those pictures, doesn't matter which one, and combine it with the other one. So, and then I lower the opacity a little bit so that I can move her around and figure out where I think it would look the best, but I mean, for right now, that, that'll do. Move it back up to 100. Okay, first thing you want to do now that you have the two images on top of each other is double click on your background layer. You want to make sure this is zero because now you're going to be able to put things above it, below it, move it around, change the opacity. It's just so much easier to work with it this way. Hit OK. And now right click on layer zero. Duplicate layer. OK. Put it above the portrait. Go back to layer zero. Change the thing to color burn. Create a new layer down here next to the trash can to the left. And this creates it above it. You want it to go below it. So you want this new layer below layer zero, and you want to paint this in white with your paint bucket. Now you're going to change the opacity of layer two to somewhere around 75. You can you're gonna change that later, so it doesn't really matter what you do now. Okay, so next, you're going to click the eyeball on layer zero copy so you can see the portrait. So we're going to work with that now. This is the longest thing that takes, so um, now we're going to select just her because you want to erase the body of it, uh, the background eventually. So sorry how slow I am. This takes a long this time. If you had a tablet, that would be great. It would be a lot quicker and a lot more accurate, but I don't. So I apologize. Ooh, I don't know what I'm doing there. You can get really detailed with this, but for right now, for the tutorial, it's just whatever. Okay. Alright, I have her selected. Now, after we did that, we want to go up to select and inverse it. So now that we have the background selected, now hit your delete key on your keyboard so that gets rid of the background. Go back up to select, inverse it again. So now we have her selected again. Um, click the eyeball on layer zero copy. Click on layer zero copy. And now we're going to create a mask on this. To do that, it's all the way at the bottom, right next to the FX button. It's this uh, rectangle with a circle in the middle. Click that, and you should have a new mask layer that's black and white with her as the white and the background is black. It should look generally like this. Um, at this point, you can change uh, this to anything you want. I typically do screen, but it all depends on what you're looking for. It's There's all different ways that you can these it looks different with each one I found that screen looks the best like this like washed out look and um, to then I go over to under the paintbrush I change it to gradient tool I switch it to black because whatever you're painting black on this layer on this mask is going to bring out her face and you in some spots you want her face to come through more than others because right now it's mostly just the cathedral and barely like part of her eyes showing. Not not enough for me. Um, I click on this so that I can just do as much gradient as I want. I want to light up the top of her head and then it fades into the cathedral. So go like that and now we're bringing her head back into place. It's starting to look good. If you want specific areas 
go with your paintbrush and actually, well, too dark, hold on. Lower the opacity. Actually, go in and use your brush to bring out more of her face or hair or whatever. I don't really need to do that, but just so you can see. Um, I want a little bit more of this side in. Okay. Um, then, uh, one thing that you could do is the background, what we did this for. If you mess around with the opacity, that bring if you lower it, it brings out the background more. If you put it at a hundred, it's completely she's a complete silhouette. That's depending on what you're looking for. I like a little bit showing, but I want it a little lighter. So I think like sixty-ish should work for me. Um, and I usually will add another layer and use a gradient with white because I like it fading. Whoa, too much there. I don't know, sometimes I think it gives a good look. Um, from here out, I don't really like how she's black and white. I don't know, that's in color. I want to kind of even it out. Um, if you guys want to add a certain color to, to her, um, you can go down here to the right of that mask layer and do curves. And from here you can change, like you can make her red or however you want. I just want her a little warm, fleshy color, so I'm just moving around some of these to like warm it up a little bit. There's all different ways to do this, but I figured I'd show you guys how to do that one. And um, from here on out, it's just more playing around and messing with the opacity of different things, uh, um, the parts you want to show up, the parts that you don't want to show up. You can double expose three images if you want, triple exposure. It's just messing around, basically, but this is the general makeup of how to do it. Um, and that's it. I hope you guys make some pretty awesome stuff after this. Alright, thanks.